Okay. What are we doing today then? <laughs> we are doing. Does anyone know what we're doing today? The archaeology of the art of. Minoans. But however, 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 um, we we start off with a slide that links us in with what we're doing today and links us in with last week and then we do a few slides of some of the stuff that we missed last week um, just briefly um, and then we'll go on to the archaeology of the arts of the Minoans and the archaeology of the arts of the Minoans is um, is fascinating and it's also relevant to lots of other civilizations that um, <laughs> go after but we also, we also uh, to try and get some comparison uh, use um, the people of the Cycladic Islands. So we also look at the archaeology of the art of um, the Cyclads. Um, and it, they're, they're basically the civilization that existed before the Minoans. Okay? So we're going to look at that statuary as well. We're going to dot back and forth. And we're going to sort of see the pure um, difference between the, that set of art and the Minoan art. Um, so what I'd like to do briefly... Uh, is set this up. This is a, a, a cave system um, in Crete, um, the Gota um, cave system. Um, and this itself gives inspiration to the idea of labyrinths, um, the, the myths and legends that we looked at last week. So, natural labyrinths. Don't get lost in these natural labyrinths. Now, we then go on to. Uh, just briefly, um, on the islands of Hawaii, the men Huni people, um, you you all said, "Oh right, can we see a little bit of um, of men men Huni um, structures? These people that existed before the Polynesians colonised Hawaii, um, and this is one of their huge temple platforms, a huge a pyramidal, well, I'm slightly away from that, but huge sort of pyramidal." Um, type platform uh, that's exist that existed that that have existed uh, before the Polynesian people got there, and there are a number of them um, on the Hawaiian islands. And these little people that we mentioned last week, myth legend. Well, you can't really have a myth if these things if if you've actually got archaeological evidence. So it's it's not a le legend either. It's archaeological fact. But we don't have the bones of these people. And, so they've got these weird little stones standing up as well, as well that uh, are reminiscent of the large mowers on Easter Island. But that aside, that itself is one of the kappas, a giant salamander. And it is a beast of a creature, isn't it? Uh, and they can actually grow a lot bigger than that as well. So that, that could devour a, a child. And the jaws themselves... Uh, a very, very powerful jaws indeed. If you think about crocodiles, uh, but uh, with, with little, uh, little teeth, uh, these would certainly snatch a child away from the riverbank. Hence, the kappa, uh, this beast um, that was thought to be mythical, is actually biologically um, uh, has got um, the real beast surviving in the environment. The giant Japanese <coughs> salamander. Moving on. <laughs> Giving him a cuddle. Giving him a cuddle. Yeah, that's that's just normal yeah. everyday cuddle there. Enjoy that's that, not what yeah. you think it is. It's grabbing his foot. Yeah. Don't get too excited. It's not one of those lectures. Thank you. <laughs> um, there it is. Giant, massive salamander. Um, and th this beast itself is on the prowl, and naturally, um, it cannot um, stay a long time out of water. Um, that's why when we looked at the images of the kappa, it sort of had a little cup in its head with, um, with water in it, and it needs to be, um, but that's it, sort of. The water is meant to be there to give it some kind of power. Without the water, it hasn't got power naturally. It's dead. Um, so, um, the, the, these are some of the structures. The, the, um, when archaeologists started excavating these, they found, obviously, the, po the Polynesian people were right. These Menhuni people do actually exist. Because we've actually got the, the, the actual stonework, dress stonework, uh, and the, the, this is like 
the, these are the huge canal systems that Menahuni um, created uh, on those that, that archipelago of islands or, or Hawaii. What sort of age are, they, are we talking about there? Probably about two thousand years ago, at least. Mm. So all, all these, all this sort of, they they, they built these huge, vast um, 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 landscapes. Um, and they're saying that this this sort of network of th this network here is is part of a huge fishing lake complex constructed well before the Pe Polynesians got there. So you could date the archaeology. The Polynesians didn't get there until a certain date. Uh, and, and then you're thinking, who actually constructed these things? The Menhuni. Sorry, we've got a little sperm. <laughs> la 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 la. There you go. Uh, no, that's not Menhuni people. They find all these weird steps everywhere as well. Very modern-looking steps. Do they go anywhere? Um, well, usually they don't. That's the point. Well, we're in in the in, in the tropical rainforests um, of um, the the Inca landscape in Peru. Um, they they've got they've got all these wonderful carved steps into the mountainside, and sort of <laughs> steps leading, and they don't and they haven't traced where they go. You know, so these little things, so we don't really know. So um, um, this 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 little object um, is very much far away from the type of pottery um, that we'll be looking at and, and the art that we'll be looking at associated with the wonderful Minoan civilization. This is from a site in Crete, in Crete known as Vasiliki, um, and this is this is created um, in the later Minoan world. Um, but lots of the stuff we will see was was created in the earlier Minoan world. So if you if you think in your head four thousand years ago, you think in your head around the eruption of Thera, which is um, three thousand six hundred twenty-eight um, years ago. Uh, um, did I say six thousand? I meant three thousand um, six hundred twenty-eight uh, years ago, and you think then about um, three thousand. Um, 400 year, years ago, you, that's the end of the Minoan civilization. So within the space of 600 years, you've got a really advanced civilization that disappears. Uh, we think, but it doesn't actually because the people are still around and they become part of the Mycenaean world. Um, and it's the same with the the, pe the other people that we're going to look at, the Cycladic people. The Cycladic islands from mainland Greece threaded over to the likes of Crete, over towards uh, Rhodes, staying away from Turkey. So, there, 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 there are one or two slides, in fact, it, when I say one or two, there are two slides that really stand out today, massively stand out, <coughs> you think that's not Minoan, but it's, it's completely Minoan. There's, there's been a little bit of sort of restoration on, on two of the slides, uh, one's very much at the end, um, and one of them tells a wonderful story associated uh, with a wonderful legend and if you were listening at the beginning, uh, you will know about a television uh, programme that Jan... Oh, sorry, yeah? last week, yeah. Don't, don't like to say. They weren't listening, it's tough. <laughs> I'm sure someone watched it. <coughs> so, what we've got, we've got a comparison between this here, which is um, cycladic art, and then we've got Manoan art. Um, and the one thing that we can say about Manoan art is that they love portraying things. They, they love to tell you about the wonderful Manoan world. They wanted to tell you, um, as, a, as an open window, what the Manoan world was about. And this is Manoan art itself, not at its best, but this is Manoan art at its best when it's trying to project what they're about. So obviously, they were great fishermen. Um, they were associated with the sea. They were associated with trade. They were associated with a sense of being an island being, like we are in this room today. And this itself is cycladic art. From the cycladic islands, as I've described, from mainland Greece all the way over to Crete. Cycladic art is very strange because you either know about it or you know nothing about it. Or you've seen a program on it 
And after you've seen a programme on it, you have no idea what the programme was about. Because we know very little about the psychopathic people. We know more about the Malawan people in one archaeological site that they've excavated on Crete than we do about the entire psychopathic world. Simply, the art itself became very fashionable uh, in the Bauhaus um, stage of the art form, um, the modernist art form of the 1920s and the 30s. So people thought, actually, this stuff looks very similar to the stuff we're making now, when in fact this stuff was being created um, in excess of 4,500 years ago. So it's very modernist in outlook, and it's very modernist in input as <coughs> well. These types of figures uh, were probably once ten a penny. Now a great deal of them are in private collections. And if you wish to acquire these in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s and 60s, um, you would have to destroy the archaeology to get to these statues. In doing so, you're destroying the matrix of their world, the understanding of their world that has come to us by our archaeologists who have excavated the Minoan civilization. I wanted to jumble these two together. I actually regretted uh, using Cycladic art today because I thought it would make a whole lecture in itself. However, wouldn't be able to find much about it. So I just decided to get away with it within the Minoan lecture. And in fact, these people were just pre-Minoan, okay? These are the people who gave inspiration to the Minoans in a completely different way. You could say that there are vulgarities with Minoan arts, but these vulgarities are artistic license. I'm sure that some of you would think that Picasso's work is absolutely vulgar. And you might think that Monet w was a childish artist. And you might think that Van Gogh should be resigned to the dustbin. But all that work itself is going for multi-millions of pounds. At that day, they weren't seen to be inspirational. Today, they are. But in the day, Minoan art has always been inspirational in the way they created it. Again, the window to their world. They wish to tell you so many things, which we don't have when we look at the Roman world, for example. The Roman world liked to keep the best for you to see, and keep the things like disease and poverty um, and gladiatorial competitions a back burner. Don't exactly know what happened in most of those gladiatorial competitions. We have no idea, for example, what Roman music sounded like. All we've got is one or two instruments that have survived. When you look at the Minoans, we know the important things to them because they want us to know. This itself is a remarkable piece of art. And why is this a remarkable piece of art? Found on an island that was lost in a moment of time again. 1,628 years BC, the eruption of Fira, otherwise known as Santorini. This wonderful fresco was excavated at the Akrotiri site. Like many frescoes, they tell another story of the Minoan world. And within the concentric areas of water and land, you could probably work out what this may be portraying. Created well before Plato and Herodotus, well before those wonderful <coughs> ancient Greek writers, this may, in one way, be portraying what Atlantis was really about. <coughs> you see in the centre the various buildings as we zoom in, and I do actually come back to this again, these various buildings, temples. And as Plato once wrote, the concentric canals of chunks of land that radiate from the centre, the centre of the cosmos of the Minoan landscape. Whether this has anything to do with um, Atlantis or if this is Atlantis, but again, the Minoans are telling us something. They're also telling us of the vessels that will hug, would hug the coast and go all the way over to Egypt. These are the same people, are they not, that discovered 
10. These are the same people that went far and wide. These are the same people that you might think gave inspiration to the stories of Atlantis. Because they would then go into the Atlantic Ocean, going far and wide to eventually find the tin. And they must have discovered the tin, uh, along with the Phoenicians from Cornwall. Uh, because we wouldn't have the Bronze Age without tin. You can't substitute um, tin for something else and have the Bronze Age. These people were in the Bronze Age. They were in a moment of illumination. They had styles of writing. One, we can't really understand linear A and linear B that we've managed to translate. So through the annals of this world, their art is so, so important. And so much can we learn from their art. Alas, we can't understand what we look like this time in history. With all the best with all the best carvings in the world, we're still trying to pick, uh, put together um, the Pictish world, for example. And that was only 1,300 years ago. There's lots of carvings from the Pictish world, but there's not enough. What the Minoans give us is colour, vibrancy. They give us light and illumination. Light and illumination which would have come along with the period of the Christian world, when it hit our land, those illuminated manuscripts are nothing because they only tell us about one area of life back then. This truly tells us a lot more. You've got the Etruscans next week and you'll have more of this style. Um, and what you, one, thing that you can t one thing that you can glean from what we know about other writings from another civilization, i.e. ancient Greece, is the effect a volcano would have on a civilization, as it's just murmuring. But what am I talking about? Those that know anything about Delphi, in mainland Greece, which comes along a thousand odd years later, you will know that we have now proven that the oracle would uh, offer a readings uh, due to the intoxicating nature of the gases that were coming up through fissures in the rock that led directly into a temple. The oracle at Delphi would use that, um, that sulfuric um, gas to hallucinate. And what better place you need to go to the top of um, the very top, the peak of the volcano that once existed at Thera, plonk a temple on top of it, and you could give the best readings ever, with all the sulphurs and the gas coming up. And no wonder Atlantis is a legend, because we could never find that temple again, because that was the first thing that went bang when the volcano threw its lungs over the Mediterranean Sea and created all those tidal waves that destroyed a big chunk of the Minoan world. The Minoan world kept on for another 100, 120 years, but they become vastly different in their art. And I am very aware that a few months back, about a year ago, I, I gave a lecture on Minoan pottery and so on. This, the, the earlier sort of uh, mix of, of, of description and animals and all the rest of it. And the later stuff become a little bit, bit utilitarian because the Minoan world was starting to falter. Moving to the next slide. A um, bit of an art history pressure, which is slightly wrong because it's a lot bigger. But um, this is basically what, what Thera looked like about 250 years ago. There's still gases coming up from the centre there. And I wouldn't want to be an Akateri when it blows up again. Um, but that basically, at one point, there was, there was, a, there was a, this, this led to a huge peak. You can imagine that, that at the base, um, there, there would have been irrigated water channels. They would have been housing more irrigated water channels. The best land is it not, is to be found for growing vines around volcanoes. The likes of Pompeii for it, itself, the ashes themselves gave to be some of the best vines grown in Italy in the 16 and 1700s. And then they found that bloody Roman city underneath that ended it all. Um, so they had to excavate that instead.
The art of the Roman civilization of Bronze Age Crete displays a love of animals, sea and plant life. We've already seen a bit of the sea and some of the animals at sea as well. Which was used to decorate frescoes and pottery and also inspired Minoan artists uh, delighted in flowing naturalistic shapes and designs. And there is a vibrancy in Minoan art which was not present in contemporary in the contemporary East. There was more of a vibrancy. When you look, for example, at the Egyptian world, the Egyptian world, their art is wonderful. But it's a bit rigid. It's a little bit more rigid than the contemporary Minoan stuff. It's a bit more to say this is what we're about on that level. The Minoans are this is what it's about on this level. Aside from its aesthetic qualities, Minoan art also gives valuable insights into the religious, communal, uh, funeral, settlement, everyday life of, of a very powerful civilization that gave the word sea. But then again, Cathy would argue that if you look at Scarabray, you've got a civilization with little villages and shops and workshops existed at Ar on Orkney uh, over 5,000 years ago. But that was a different world, and that's a different kettle of fish again. What I want to do is um, show you a little video. Um, so a tiny little video. This video itself has two little captions on it, and it talks about um, Minoan burials later on. Um, and um, a Minoan, the Minoans themselves um, had a link um, with the afterlife that would be better understood if more research was undertaken on it. Um, so we're just, I'm just going to chuck this in. It's a bit of a something different. Um, sorry, I think it's coming up. Archaeologists in Crete um, have uncovered an intact Minoan era tomb containing a well-preserved adult skeleton as well as funerary vessels, they love to adorn their burials. Um, and this itself um, is not a stone sarcophagi, it's not a wooden sarcophagi, it's a ceramic sarcophagi that, that's made of clay. And it's there. So, 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 so they're great, great potters. I remember saying that last time. This is obviously a bit later. It's more utilitarian than stuff that you find buried here. Um, but again... We see so many different levels of the Minoan world to give a good impression of what they were like. So when Arthur Evans excavated at Nossos in 1900, he was entering the door of a sweet shop. A sweet shop would have all the wealth and the civilization that could be readily interpreted and understood, unlike many other civilizations. Back, back to the back to the Roman thing again. I, I, I was absolutely shocked when um, Mich Michelle brought me a CD with with Roman music on. Um, that's what Pete heard last week. Um, and we were we we were reading on the on the cover of this 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 uh, CD, and it said, "Not not we we've no information of what Roman music sounded like." Um, and we and we think, my God. Music must have been so powerful to the Romans, so why was none of it written down? Um, why, why don't we understand how these musical instruments are put together? What's this got to do with this again? Back to what I said earlier on. What was important to these people was sport. So we've got representations of their sport. Fishing. We've, we've got representations of their fishing. Clothing. They love their clothes. Okay, New look was nothing compared to these people. They, they love to dress. One thing that we do see is that because uh, their frescoes were in the main in colour, we can get an idea um, to how a woman dressed and to what a man's hair was like and what colour it was because it's so vibrant. And this we may still need that plastic yes. as the yes. uh, as the clay because to fire it would have been they could use it. And it's one place. It's just one piece. It's one. It's in one place. It's fired. It's in one piece, and you are very right there. And it tells again of the little um, 
little subtleties of their world, little surprises. Arthur Evans had no idea um, that he'd be able to go into that sweet shop and find what he found. Um, and we're still, we know, we know a hell of a lot about the Manoas and we're still learning stuff about the, the Manoas. On the other side of the coin, when I do the Etruscans next week, there's a lot about the Etruscans, but there's so much about the Etruscans that we have no idea. Uh, because they were eradicated as a civilization by the Romans. Um, the Manoas just simply disappeared, and lots of their stuff um, was, was either left to decay or to be forgotten about. Which is just a little bit more of it. So, I think I'm probably putting a couple more videos in. It's not, not a video, video, but something else. Um, and it goes, uh, initial. An initial inspection of the ceramics found in the tomb allowed it to be dated to the late Minoan period, as I've already said. Again, these things are being found today. And, and you are right, uh, Chris, to fire something like this would be incredibly difficult. Is it, is it possible, because it's a John Clay, isn't it? <coughs> you can get John Clay for double firing. Could it be no. that? Is that that would have been fired? Yeah, that would have yeah. been fired. I, I don't know. I was yeah. thinking. You, you can you can actually thing. see here. It's it's all been fired in one piece. Mm -hmm. um, it it's obviously it, it hasn't been sun baked. It's been clearly baked. Yeah. It's. Yeah. No, no, there's, there's yeah. some, I read it. Yeah, you are, you are right. But you you are right. Well, you you get that clay that uh, uh, you use with children to make little pots yeah, and air stuff. Dry. Air drying yeah. clay. Yeah, that does exist. <laughs> um, the tomb was discovered during an emergency excavation in a hollow grove outside the village of Kentry, um, in Repetra in Crete. Um, and these new things are being found. Again, this is to sort of um, um, go along with what we're doing today. And who am I, I going to pick on now? Come on, who's going to give me the wrong answer? Uh, <coughs> Lynn, you're going to give me the right answer. Um, is there anything, can you, can you just tell me if there's anything wrong with this artist impression made 20 years ago? Oh, yeah. Just, just, a, just, a, just a double, yeah. But Joan doesn't ask for people. That's a, a complete, like a cactus. That's a completely yeah. wrong answer. In fact, everything that you see in this artist impression uh, has a parallel within the Manoan world. Uh, w w not just on their pottery, not just on their frescoes, not just in the archaeology that remains. You could probably say that that was a scene uh, approximately um, 1,700 years BC. To be able to reconstruct the detail of the world in the past from what you have uh, is true magic. Um, for example, um, if we went to display how we looked in medieval Wales in 1400, it would be very, very difficult to even get close to anything like the way we looked. But there you've got the illustrations. It's just black, and, it, it's not black and white. Oh, it, the, 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 it's in black and white, if you know what I mean. Um, it's, it's all in color, it, it's just simple as that. We could say, right, Either they're li lying about their world completely, and we can dress a man or a woman like that, and we can make an illustration. A bit like these temples beyond as well. They had square pillars, they had circular pillars. What we do know from the illustrations, it tells us what they look like. From the archaeology, it tells us what they look like. The, the, Lossos, the, the Lossos Temple um, at um, the, the Temple of Minos at Lossos is, is, is not known as being a labyrinth or a landscape for nothing. Because there, there's structures on top of structures, and the, the ones underneath are, are relatively complete. And it's just right. Artist impression, right? All we need to do, we can add a bit of colour. We can do a reconstruction. That's exactly what Arthur Evans was doing. Lots of people can be critical of the work of Arthur Evans, uh, but if you compare it with the way we treat our history and archaeology in our own land, uh, Arthur Evans did the world a favour by doing the work he did uh, from 1900. 1920. It reconstructed the great palace of uh, Minos at Knossos. And that is one of the reconstructions. 
we, we can subtly make a comparison here. In Britain, we've reconstructed Roman buildings, the likes of Butzer, uh, the, the ones along Hadrian's Wall, uh, the one right at Roxeter as well. There are other examples. We've made Roman reconstructions of buildings from, from the evidence. Um, and simply Arthur Evans is taking what he's finding, the illustrations, and completely rebuilding sections of this wonderful landscape. <coughs> you could say, um, you're, only going on, you're only going on what the art tells you. How do you know that's right? Well, people believe the Bible, and they say that's right. People believe, um, people believe every single wor word that Julius Caesar wrote to be gospel. Um, so if that's going to happen, why can't we believe what the Minoans themselves are telling us about themselves? We'll just reconstruct the world from that. I'm surely that's the best way, because we can't go back in time. We don't have these time capsules. But the time capsules themselves are what they've left behind. Now, you know, we, we, just, we, ju we just took that other illustration and we said, well, um, how much is that real? How much is, is false? Well, um, I wanted to so much have a long ending lecture with a thousand more slides in, but I just thought that's not going to do this any justice. So I want to look at the psychiatric piece. I want to just sort of end, on, end this lecture eventually sometime today. Um, so I, I, I thought, right, we'll, we'll just won't make too many comparisons, but... What we, what we do find um, is this can be completely reconstructed from what we've got. Uh, from the costume they're wearing, to the headdresses, to the diadem they're wearing. We, we, we've got so many dolphins all over the place. We've got so many uh, freezers of fish everywhere. Uh, this wonderful design here, this sort of semi-pseudo-galosh design, and this design itself, at the end, comes in one of the last slides that I'm going to show you, and it will blow you away. Um, so we can reconstruct, reconstruct down from what we've got, um, everything <coughs> in, and what what what, there's, what what we find within the archaeological exca uh, excavations uh, that have taken place on Crete, uh, at Palacastro, uh, the likes of Knossos, these are great palace sites of the Minoan civilization. Um, when we look at these these sites, we can actually see pots that have just been left. Um, and we're thinking, right, yeah, that, that's fairly good. Um, and we, we can see this. We can actually see this and touch this almost when it's almost as if what happened last year, um, Barbara and I, we, we decided to go down to Sully and uh, we decided that we were going to clear up um, sort of um, a wonderful um, sort of seating arrangement with a nice floor and some steps. We thought, right, we, we're gonna we're gonna go there with some tools. We're gonna clean it up and tidy it up, right? After an hour, we cleaned this whole thing up. It looked beautiful. It was created in 1907. I remember showing you some slides. Um, and, I and we just sat down and we thought, my God, the last people sit sit here on these seats was probably a hundred years ago because it's probably abandoned at the time of the First World War. This thing, uh, because it was actually peat flo um, folded on the floor level. It was really strange. And we're actually touching the past. And what Arthur Evans was doing back when he was looking at this, this very site, looking at the Minoan civilization um, in 1900, he was actually touching the past. It was almost as if he was opening a page of the book and just blowing the dust away. Um, and this was the detail that he was coming across. Oh, and I tell you what, the Italian archeologists was, were so bloody jealous that Arthur, uh, Arthur Evans was excavating uh, at Knossos. Um, so they decided to excavate another site down the, the road. It wasn't as good as Knossos. Uh, the Italian and the British archaeologists were always competing ac across the Mediterranean. So what the Italians decided to do, um, Arthur Evans has got his reconstruction at Knossos, but the, what the Italians um, did, they, 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 they took the, uh, the Acropolis, um, I, men I mentioned this, the Acropolis on uh, Lindos um, in, in uh, Rhodes, and the Italians decided to reconstruct um, the temple there, except they built, reconstructed it with the wrong material um, in an attempt to compete uh, with the work at Knossos. Um, it can be said uh, the <coughs> British building is far better than the Italian building because all the Italian stuff has had to be taken down and it's got to be um, put back together piece by piece. Um, so what I'm what the point I'm trying to make there is, is very simple. The point is, 
is that archaeology is very competitive. And archaeology is very competitive to get things right or to fake the past and to get things wrong. Have we got it wrong or right? I'd say we've got it right. But the, is that your girls upstairs, uh, Pete? If they say she won and come, come train with me, think she wins more. <laughs> no, I won't because they won't turn up anymore, will they? Did they? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. I think the reaction was no. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Um, <coughs> this, this itself um, is actually an arrangement of rooms at, uh, at a Cretan site. Uh, which all the fresco is, is, is now gone. But you can get an idea of, of some of the dimensions of the rooms. And they love their square columns as well. Just like the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians like their square columns. It's like a navy thing. Um, and again. And it's, it, it's very simple, straightforward architecture. And what, what's completely missing in this. Um, what I think what the archaeologist um, Arthur Evans and uh, his compatriots wanted to show was sort of a stage to stage by reconstruction of what these buildings look like. Uh, even though concrete's being used, uh, you could get an idea of these heavy uh, timber beams um, and all the fill in between. Um, and usually what we find at, uh, at, in Crete, associated with the Minoan civilization, is the wide use of different materials. So in some areas for the columns, you might use stone. In other areas, you might use Timber, uh, which is um, which is almost uh, rendered on the outside uh, with plaster and then painted over. You you see you see across the Cretan sites uh, that their sites were completely made out of stone. You see other Cretan sites that they weren't made out weren't completely made out of stone. So what we've got we've got square buildings and the rest of the buildings themselves are made of timber. And the archaeologists are excavating and think, where's all the stone gone? Well. Because it was made of timber, it wasn't in the way. You find little fragments at the bottoms of, of the rooms that, they, that the archaeologists have excavated, usually charcoal. And I think, I think in, a, in, a, in a moment we'll be um, swapping over to Cycladic civilization. And we come back to Minoan. Uh, it's mixed up that way. So, um, when, so obviously the Minoan world. These are sort of the, the tra main trading areas with the Minoan world. But what we've got the Minoan world proper is sort of spread, follow my finger, all the way over to here, a little bit of this. That's basically the Minoan world proper with a few settlements. But these are sort of the main trading areas with them. Um, and you've chucked in Troy there. But the Minoans got similar, have got settlements elsewhere as well, just, just like the Phoenicians did as well. And the Cycladic people, that area. I know it's not showing any islands, but believe me, there's, a, there's hundreds of islands missing in, on this chart. But these are cycladic people that, as I said, um, will be going on to very soon. I'm going to put the light in there. The Minoans, as I, said, as I said at the beginning, the Minoans have a very important place in world history. In fact, they've got a, they're, they're key players in world history. Um, Building the first, uh, I got my notes here. Um, it says building the first civilization to appear on European soil. I don't really agree with that, but there are major, major civilizations, and there are lots of different dates to when they existed and when they w w uh, went to. So, but ball pack for about two thousand to one thousand four hundred years BC, four thousand years ago, um, and to be famous for what you're finding in the archaeology is useful. To be seen to be famous for what they actually did is useful. To understand these people as we are is very powerful. Um, there was um, the Minoans, however, as a people, called the Minoans is a name that was coined in 1900 by Sir Arthur Evans. We've no idea what they really called themselves. Um, 
And with, with this rise in importance, it was probably the likes of the Minoans, the great pioneers of the sea and the Phoenicians, that we actually do see the evolution of civilization. There was the Egyptians. The Egyptians by themselves are very important, key in history. But the Egyptians would probably have just stayed where they are for another thousand years and nobody would have bothered them. It's because of the rise of the Minoans of trade so that the Egyptians can have a greater outlook. And then you've got introductions like iron into the world of Egypt. But that doesn't come for some time and that's after the Minoan world. And to be a naval power is to be seen as strategic. We can look at the Second World War. If we were joined to Europe, the Second World War would have had a completely different outcome. Uh, but because we were an island, we were able to last. We had longevity against what was happening. The Minoans had longevity as well. If it hadn't been for the events, those tragic events that ruined the height of their civilization over three and a half thousand years ago, we may have seen a different development within the Mediterranean Sea. We would have had two great superpowers, Egypt versus the Minoans. There may have been no rise of Alexander the Great. There would have been no rise of Islam because the, the great civilization of the Persians would have continued unchecked. So no need for Islam in the first place. No rise of Christianity. But we can talk about things and maybes. That simply didn't happen. Cycladic art. This is a pornographic lecture without the porn when you look at the Cycladic people. There's nothing really sexual about these figures, I feel. Um, and this is Cycladic art and a range of Cycladic art. And yes, Chris, I will enlarge the images. Yes, Lynn, I'll turn the lights off. <laughs> Aren't they very strange figures? Yeah, mm. very modernist, mm. very, ba very Bauhaus, very sort of um, the type of thing that uh, the Germans didn't like in Germany uh, before the Second World War. Very different. What story does it tell us? We're struggling to understand <coughs> what. Because modernist art is like that. It's a, it's a different array of images to move on from the, the actual world that we live in. If we think of it that way, that's the idea of determinism. That people determine their landscape and evolve in different ways wherever they are. Um, and yes, and I think the point that you may have been trying to make there um, is that we don't really understand what's going on Easter Island with those statues, do we? No, they reckon they're the whole... So the, and at the moment we see the head. Yes. They reckon that the whole body is there as well, don't they? It could be, it could yeah, be. And that one there, the third one in, looks very similar that to one? what they were painting. Yes. And we can't really work out what's going on with it. Um, and... We, we, see, we see male and female representations. But overall, they, they, they're, they love to do this, not this, cover up. They, they don't have um, uh, genitalia showing. It's just, it's just plain. So you get away with that. So it's just folded like this. Um, the, these ones would have had heads on them. And that would have had a head on it as well. Um, and the, the closest we can actually come to these is to assume what cycladic art is about. We'll come back to him in a short while. Cycladic art. <laughs> Morph. That in itself looks very similar to something that was carved in 1925 or 1926 or 1930. These things existed or exist with a time with a timeline going all the way back four thousand five hundred years, and then we go to the Minoans and it looks thinking, 
What's changed? This stuff has been rejected, and we're going to the Malone world. We don't really know what's going on. There's this huge revolution within art. Art is always a revolution. Art is always <coughs> about change. Art is always about innovation, going this way or that way. Predating the Minoans, the Cycladic civilization and unusual modern art. The Cycladic culture, known also as the Cycladic civilization, uh, is pre-Minoan, and it may have gone back as far as 5,000 years ago, where the likes of our ancestors are creating Scara Bray. Um, and one thing I completely missed to say is up until 1870, none of these civilizations existed on paper. Nothing existed before ancient Greece. And one or two archaeologists are uh, thinking, so you're quite right, yeah. The likes of uh, Dr. Schliemann, um, German archaeologist Dolfal, um, later on Arthur Evans, uh, you've got the likes of um, Flinders Petrie, all knew each other. Probably never really all sat down, but they communicated letters here and there. And, and um, they all started asking this question the books have got to be wrong. There must be something before ancient Greece. How suddenly do we have ancient Greece? And slowly but surely, they come across the Minoans, or then the Mycenaeans, depending on which, which, which person you're interpreting. The Mycenaeans are after the Minoans, the Mycenaeans fall apart around 3,600 years ago, the Mycenaeans 3,200 years ago. And then you've got these weird people being discovered that created Cycladic art. And suddenly, the world before ancient, Egypt, uh, ancient Greece isn't as bleak as the archaeologists made out it to be. The Cyclades is a group of islands located in the Aegean Sea, given its name to the Cycladic culture. Excavations reveal that um, the art itself may have its origins, not just 5,000 years ago, not just six, but maybe as far back as 7,000 years ago, created this art itself. But it's not unknown for us to see these types of figures being produced. You all know about the Venus figures, don't you? These weird Venus figures found in Paleolithic caves dating back 30,000 years ago. We know that some of them are in um, um, ceramic or carved bone or stone. And that, that existed in the past. So why not cycladic art from as far ago as 5,000 years ago? So it stretches all the way down to Crete here, which isn't shown. Uh, you've got uh, the cycladic island. So stretching from mainland, mainly on these islands, probably wasn't discovered uh, until later because... Nobody was really bothered in exploring these islands. And that's the point. There are probably other civilizations left to be discovered on this planet. One was found to be discovered in North America, uh, South America, uh, uh, very, very recently. They thought, oh my God, we, we found another South American civilization. So there's more than just the Incas here um, in the north of South America. Um, so is trying to fit this together. We can never really have a pure picture of the past. It's probably whole civilizations have become completely extinct. Just going to go back to my notes again. Um, so, if we think of this cycladic world, it sort of overlapped with the Mycenaean. Uh, um, start again. It overlapped with the Minoan world. So it's likely that the Cycladic people said, look at one of our statues. And the Maloans going, yeah, look, look at what we've produced. Yeah, look at ours. We, we think it's this. And yeah, but we're telling you what this is. It, it would have been a real, real contrast of styles. Um, and the strange thing about Cycladic people is like the Maloans, they just completely disappeared. Uh, they, um, they moved from... Um, they moved around the islands. And archaeologists have interpreted various movements of the people 
uh, because they were afraid of something. Uh, they seemed to move further inland, so they'd stopped carving these statues and stuff. They moved away from the sea. And as they started to move away from the sea, their populations got smaller and smaller, some archaeologists believe. Um, and with the, with the blood pool getting tighter and tighter, um, and their idea of civilization, the Cycladic people become extinct. Or maybe they continued and become part fully of the Minoan world. Um, when, we, when we move on, it's likely, like the Minoans, like the, the Cycladic people, may have become um, inundated by various volcanic activity. Maybe there was a, a, a volcanic incident that caused a huge tidal wave associated with Thera. And the swell itself rose um, 10 metres out of the water and headed and completely destroyed the entire chain of islands all the way up to mainland Greece. When, when you've got a tsunami going, as you saw with the, with the Boxing Day tsunami in 2004, the water kept going and going. You, you could be up on the side of a mountain and the water will follow you. A 10 metre tall swell heading inland. And it's likely that like the Minoan civilizations after the Cycladic civilization may have been wiped out that way. Cycladic civilization, um, during the 1950s, uh, there, was, there was a complete explosion, as there had been in the 30s and 40s. There was a complete explosion in the need for Cycladic sculpture. Uh, they were regarded by the artists of the time as an excellent example of modernism and minimalism. Can't get more minimalist than that. As a consequence, the demand for such artefacts soared Many Cycladic graves were completely and categorically looted, everything destroyed to get to this Cycladic art. In the process, causing irreparable damage to the archaeological records and a complete uh, misunderstanding of who the Cycladic people were and are, and we need to find more evidence to understand them. Well, right, okay, a uh, few more images of Cycladic art. Um, and lo and behold, I've managed to keep going for a whole hour. I'm ready to collapse. So, again, if this, if 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 you were if you were a car boot sailor, right? I know you'd pass this by, but would you have any idea that this was over three thousand years old? Would any of you? Come on. <laughs> it is. It is. It's thirty years. But this is that precise detail. None of us would know and. You, you could have people with these displayed in, in, in their homes or in the backs of cupboards. Because what's happening in the 1950s is a huge change in the world. Um, Archaeology in the 1950s and 60s w wasn't that important. We, we know that because um, if you look at the South Wales valleys, all the industrial archaeology from the 1700s is completely destroyed and bulldozed away. Um, and it's likely that these things after the 1960s, after the period of modernism uh, became repl was replaced by a new modernism. Modernism became really unfashionable in the 1970s. It's likely that these original wonderful pieces of art, lots of them may have ended up in skips or in bins. Everyday refuge. So then we've lost more of it. Um... And it was oh, and this this little thing here. I don't, you can't read it. But one one of the reactions against this looting was the establishment of the Museum of Cycladic Art in Athens in 1986. By 1986, most of it was gone. Most of it was gone. Did, did, did when, when uh, just a bit of a digression. When, when we went to Shetland, right? When we went, Michelle and I went to Shetland. We we sat down. I spoke to my university supervisor then, and uh, he, we said. Um, we, we asked him any questions. He said, did you know it wasn't until the late 1980s that the island actually had an archaeologist? Up until then, people could do what they liked. 1980s now. Um, and you, um, he, he described how whole Viking settlements were just being bulldozed in about 1985. Whole sort of structures from the Neolithic period just being bulldozed. And this is, a, this is, this is when I'm 
when I'm in school, right? So most most of the psychotic world is gone, um, and into private collections. Um, it says the museum houses one of the most complete uh, private collections of psychotic art worldwide, uh, which you can actually um, go and see. Apart from the famed marble sculptures, the museum's collection also includes other artifacts, including tools, weapons, and pottery from every period of the psychotic culture. But very little of it has survived. I will just show you these. Look at them. Quite, quite interesting, aren't they? But they're not lifelike figures. They're... they're Lots, lots of them are just so high. Uh, that one is probably about that high. I can't get an idea of scale, but I can see that probably from a pot alongside. Um, look at that head that's been broken off. A couple more as well. Let's just finish this. I don't know the context of these, really, whether they're gods or what they're supposed to be. What they're, they're we don't really know the context of what's going on in East Star Island either. So, so on this scale, we've got more. We got more understanding of the Eastern Island culture than we do of these people. And that's saying something, really. Um, so no, we don't have an idea of context. Now, I, I, I've, been, I, I've been looking at this and I've sort of dismissed this. I don't think this is psychotic art. This was coming into the collection of slides that I had and I just don't know. But if this is psychotic art, which I'm dismissing, uh, more Peruvian, um, but that, it doesn't fit. But if it is, then I apologise. I'm not going to talk about that it's one. Too lifelike, isn't it? Too lifelike, yeah. Too lifelike, yeah. But that's in Peru, so it can't be Peruvian. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, look at these here. Look at these. Just more like godlike figures, don't they? I've got that woman. That, 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 that woman looks like my Michelle, and that's me. Because she's short, and I'm tall. Oh, she's often like that when she's having to listen to my left. But, okay, can I, can I just have one of you to say, uh, what do you think these mean? Um, Lynn. Oh, stop picking that. <laughs> Go on. Chuck it out there. Let's have it. Feed it on. <laughs> All right, then. Ellen, you, you're chaffing at the bit. Go on. I, I can't <laughs> believe we don't have a chaffer. Uh, a marble, right. limestone, yeah. and sandstone, yeah. But so that, that, are, are the heads attached? They don't look the, the, they these heads attached. are attached. These two are attached, yeah. They just look like they're chaffing. Oh, come on, Andrew. Chuck something in there. Nothing to do with Easter Island. Why have they got their arms bony? We, I can't. This, this is thick. They it's such an enigma. Like yeah. We've got a complete yeah. blank. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, they're dead. They must have yeah. the could be. Could be. That's true. Oh, yeah. That's true. See, I should have asked. I should have asked the intelligent one in the first place. So, is it ancestors? Are we gone directly into religion? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Ellen, get ready for it. <laughs> no evidence of them being painted or anything like that. No evidence of them being painted. No. No. They're horrible. Look at that. Well, it's, this is a sandstone yeah. version. This is uh, very. As well, isn't it? Yeah. If it, if this was Roman, Adam would be straight up there. That's his best hope you can get. And look at that. Oh, eyes. Ah, you got eyes on this one. A relief eyes. And a nose. There you go, look at that. It just looks like um, it looks like Chris on a bad day. Um you you got you got the lips there, the nose. I think this is carved in sandstone actually. You've got the eye. Um you you've got the eyelashes and you've got the eyebrows, or maybe I don't know, but you've got that there. And you've got some of the hair. It's a hairstyle. That's the closest you're going to get to um, to any answer. Um, and what we're going to do, we've got lots to go through and after the break. So, any questions? 
and a partridge in a pear tree. Of the fifth day of Christmas, what you would have said to me. What's that? What? Um, we, we've no idea. This is because most of it's been wiped out. We have no idea. Right, okay. Um, okay, um, I'd like to... I've, I've got a sheet to hand out to everybody. Another one. Okay. I'll put them so we'll have a we'll have a tiny we'll have a tiny bit of a break to right so on to, on to the last bit so we'll do we'll do twenty minutes and we'll have to call it a day um, but um, trying to get this momentum going and this again is another piece of Minoan art um, and you can tell how important the triremes are to them and you can tell how important um, the sea is to them and the sense of trade. And this also um, could be portrayed as a parallel um, in the Egy Egyptian world as well. I've got some notes which I'm going to do first. So I'm going to look at my notes. And right, here we go. It goes as follows. So you could say... The, but the Minoan world was a world of high culture. It was a world of astonishing detail. A world of material culture that can really help us understand what they were all about. And I've kept on repeating that. But there's, <coughs> it's very important that we see the status that Minoans have to our shared history. They had elaborate water supply and sewage systems. They had two forms of writing, the linear A, which, um, which is pic pictographic, um, which has not really been deciphered yet. And they've got another form of writing, linear B, that has been deciphered. So we've also got themselves telling us about who they are, not just through their art, but through their writing as well. A few weeks ago, we saw an image, did we not, where it put the wonderful Minoans at the heart of the sporting world, where we saw, where we saw um, a woman leaping over a bull. And that takes us into another area. We see the importance of women in the Minoan world. They're illustrated all over throughout the Manoa world. And it makes me think that the role of women could be on par with the role of men in the Manoan world, which would truly be revolutionary. I think a little bit more testing might be needed to actually prove that. We started today by mentioning that the Manoans themselves set themselves up as being those great pioneers that gave us the Bronze Age with the discovery and the, the trade back and forth of tin from places as far flung as Brittany and Cornwall. It's interesting to think and to have a sense of conjecture um, over what our direct ancestors would have felt of them in Cornwall. What would they have felt of their, uh, about their costumes? Um, e even, the, even the vessels they're arriving along the coast in Cornwall, what would they have made of that? Well, in fact, um, the vessels that we know about from our own landscape um, were canoe, canoes um, carved out of tree trunks. And in a moment, you've got these great oared vessels with sails off the coastline of Cornwall. I'm going to show you this. This is, this is a Minoan tablet. Uh, this is Linear B. And the Linear B itself, which has been translated. This was actually, this one example itself was actually found in Cyprus. Um, it's, it's to be found in clay. It's to be found in stone. No doubt it would have been found uh, on papyrus. And this is a very literate world on par with the Egyptians. 
And we always hear people shouting from the rooftops about the Egyptians. But there's so many civilizations that we don't hear being mentioned, like the Sumerians, just like uh, the Minoans and the Mycenaeans, the great trading world of these people. Decline and fall. Uh, it's probable that when the eruption at Thera occurred, I'll repeat that date, 1628 BC, uh, it's very likely that that was the, not only the height of the Minoan world, but the beginning of the end. A very, very slow decline. We don't know what the Minoans felt about that event, but it was truly devastating. Slowly and surely, the art that they were producing was created less and less. And as I said in the past, their pottery changed. But we haven't come to the end yet. Let's go back to this image I showed you. We love the dolphin here. But it comes on to the other image. We like the use of a sense of perspective about this. With, with where you're drawn to the water and you're drawn just below the bottom of the oar line. Somebody said, my God, they've, they've got a too, bit too many oars there, but that's not the point. That's not the point that's being made. And your eyes draw on to different things. Um, the sense of perspective. 2D, and you might get a 3D sense as well. And lots of this, um, lots of this stuff comes from the Lossos site, lots of it comes from the Akateri site. And um, when we do actually look at it, lo lots of the ones that we do see are, are actually um, reconstructive, reconstructed versions of the actual art itself. Because lots of the art actually fades over time. And to get decent clarity, um, you need to sort of brush up some of the images. But the images uh, are probably more true to life than actually looking at the original in some of these places. We're not talking about faking anything here. We're just making them a little bit more aesthetic to the eye. And again, not the originals actually in the buildings out um, are so pale and faded because the pigments degraded and the oak has degraded that you wouldn't get much fun out of them. So ex excuse for using these wonderful slides. It's not, not nothing to do with it. This is. I, I showed this um, to, um, to my class on Tuesday. Um, when we saw this on Tuesday, I said, look at all the fish. I look at the dolphins, and one by one they sort of said, well, it, it's slightly out of proportion. Um, and I just thought, that's just really unfair. Um, because we, we do see that they've, they've got this huge array of fish, they've got lovely, lovely sea urchins, we get an idea of colour, we get an idea of what was important to them. And obviously, we mentioned the bull, we mentioned that in, with the association with sport. We, don't, we, we know what they're linked to. And I tell you what, you don't usually see sea urchins in art, do you? The, fir the, the first reference I've got to a sea urchin is standing on one in Cyprus, and the spine going through my foot. Um, but they're telling us that these are around their shorelines, and these, again, give an idea what they're about. And again, the beautiful, vibrant colours. Um, um, you get the sort of lapis lazuli type um, ochre colour in this, and you've got the... Um, You've got the more a bog standard earthy um, ochre colour there. So I use the ochre um, in more um, pigments and I turn them, uh, the actual meaning of the word. Um, and and I just I just asked one of them, I said, one of them in my own side class, I said, identify some of these fish. He said, I can't do it. And I said, Well, you're a fisherman, surely you can identify them. And just think, I'm sure somebody who's a fish expert would be able to say, that that's this, that's a ras, and that's sort of um, a mackerel, and that's this and whatever. And again, give you an idea of their culinary taste. We, we, we actually we, we did food um, a while back as well and the various culinary tastes around the world. And, uh, do, you know, do you know what? When I started this lecture today, I was, a, I was in a lot of pain with my back. It's just like, wow, it's back again. It's that stuff there. Um, you see the jumping of the bull there. And naturally, uh, this is the Lossos version. And you could tell a few other things. You, you've got... Two, two ladies either side, you've got a lady in the middle, and you've got the, the sense of skin colour as well. Skin colour is slightly different. 
cosmopolitan world as well. You're going to get cosmopolitan world with a Minoan uh, landscape, okay? Because they're everywhere. They're in Africa, they're in Turkey, they're in Israel, they're in Greece. Cosmopolitan world, just like Britain. We, we're a cosmopolitan world as well. It's all due to having that uh, non-isolated sense of who they are. And they want to tell us who they are as well. This is, the, this is a snake goddess. Um, and that's as close as you're going to get to pornography. Um, this is their snake goddess. They, they love their snake goddess. Um, they, they, they were very much linked to their religion. But if you, take, if you take the lower half, you can probably get an idea of the types of dresses they're wearing as well from this wonderful carving. Um, because what we do see with the sporting pictures, we don't, we don't see them with much attire. But mind you, we don't see many people with much attire with the sporting images. I thought that was cute and quaint. That's actually with the original colour. There's no changes on that one. That's with the actual colour itself that the archaeologists found um, on the archaeological site. So you can, you can note from this hairstyle, which is important, do we have an idea what our people's hairstyles were like this time? The answer is no. Um, but we do see there, I just, I just sort of played with this. I thought, are those actual red lips or is that actual lipstick? Interesting. Looks like makeup, doesn't it? The yeah. eyes and everything. Yeah. And you just kicked the curveball in there, just like that. Just as we're getting to the end. Now, is this the artist, artist impression of what he feels women should look like? Or is this how women actually looked? That is the question. Because what we do see with something similar in ancient Egypt, we do actually see the wonderful makeup. And they're always portrayed with having makeup. You see on their mummies and all the rest of it. And why not have the same thing with the Minoan world? I like that though. Um, and you've got some weird sort of array at the back here, which you can't really make out. You've got some kind of tunic, and it, it's, it's a pale type tunic as well. Maybe. We, we talked about we talked about silk before we talked about uh, maybe brackets they may have had silk around because we, we, we've got the idea that um, some um, some sarcophagi in some sarcophagi in ancient Egypt um, some of the shrouds may have been made of silk so why not Minoans are about the same time maybe they've got silk they again trade but this is a land trade with with the far off land of China well they're in the same time exactly. Now this this is um, now this is a bit of a reconstruction. You can see this is this is in one of those um, those archaeological manuals from the nineteen thirties where they it, it, they would have line drawings of everything and they would like paint paint it all in. Well, this is from one of those old panel books from the nineteen thirties. But this is these bits. These these bits here are the fragments that survived. Um, I was looking at that and thinking. Um, is this a thistle-like plant? Um, is this a like um, a fire out sort of like the sand fire type plant? Um, what what type of what type of bird is this? And you start thinking, and you get something down here looks like, looks like um, dandelions, but without the petals. You know, you've got all these different things. You've got a pink little flower in here, um, and you're thinking there's a lot of information here, which is wonderful for naturalists, and. By looking at the flora and fauna, you're able to um, reconstruct the landscape. You're able to understand what the landscape was like because certain flora and fauna only like certain landscapes. So again, um, we could we could associate the Minoan landscape in Crete would be completely different from where it is at today. And this itself is that image at the end I wanted to show you. But we're not doing this. Yes, which I'm going to do this way at the end. We'll just go a couple of seconds. Um, hang on. I, think that, I do believe that is actually the last image, other than my crow. That's my brand. Right, anyway, that is actually the last image. I thought we had one or two images left, but that's not. This is how, go on. This is the last image today. So, um, um, Alan, what do you make of this? Would you have this on your wall? Yes. Would you have this on your wall? I've got the answer. What about you, Andrea? Me? Oh, no, thank you. It looks like machinery of some sort. Does this look modernist or what? It could be, yeah. Something that they used to craft it. We, we, we had cogs, yeah. We, we, we've had cogs mentioned. 
Uh, the answer is we've no idea. We've no idea what this represents. Water flow. Water flow. Yes, I I I thought of, thought this might represent like a, a water line. Uh, those those thin couple, those couple thin tapering water lines. Hey. Eh? Couple of oh, eyes, no eyes looking at you. Maybe eyes. Anything else we get from that? Sun. The sun. Yes. The circle of light. Flower head. We, 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 we've had the idea that this could represent um, the, their towns, maybe these little things are sort of the walls. Uh, the, f the fact is, I know Alan and Andrew, you wouldn't really want this on your wall, but this is advanced art. This is truly advanced art. This, this, this is the type of art that, is, that was, was adorning massive walls in, in Leicester and London and Bradford in the 1950s and 60s as part of that new modernist movement with all concrete and everything. Okay, this is what this is saying to me. This is far away, in, as in your own words, Peter, this is far out. Um, and I say that after doing the research for this, I appreciate the Minoan world. Um, and I also um, see that we can um, decline in civilization to produce this anymore. Well, I, 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 I've said many times that when Roman uh, civilization started to decay in Britain, uh, you you have um, you have a complete collapse. People stop using their towns as cities. Uh, irrigation systems cease to be used. Um, you you have a breakdown of law and order, and then you don't have pottery being produced. You don't have coins being minted. You don't have mosaics being created, and all the rest of it. So this all suddenly ended, and I wanted to end on this to give you. A, a, the full idea of how far the Minoans went and it suddenly disappeared into the cosmos. Uh, so there was something before ancient Greece, a thousand years before it. Let's have some questions and let's call it a day. Ellen? Uh, we did, I, I've had that, yes, the fins are all wrong. But that um, is obviously the perspective of the artist. Okay, we'll do that one again. Okay, we fit, fit, uh, 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 I thought you would have been more interested in. There you go. Oh, not really. No, but you can see through some of the bits. There you are, yeah. It's all just things. No, bigger. I'm trying. Look at that. You don't have the left line on the left. On the, on the Oh, <coughs> God. Oh, as Keith said, an extinct variety. An extinct variety. If that's the... If, if, that's the, if, if, that's the, if this is the case... Too tasty. If this is the case... If this is the case... Oh, I've had this I've had this a lot. You know, what, what, what is this showing? This could show an extinct, extinct a species of dolphin. Right? If that's the case, the perspective is more or less right um, and we're using your eyes Ellen not the eyes of them in the past um, you're dead right Ellen it's not it's not the way a modern dolphin looks but it may have been the way an ancient dolphin looked so I think that's that's a very important point we've made there that's a, that's a good one um, let's have two more questions I want to finish Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, archaeology Cambridge calendar this year is going to be middle and art. <laughs> actually, actually, to be honest with you, what if we do a calendar which is looking at art that we've done? Yeah, could be. As long as with, with labels on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Let's have one more question and finish. Well, it's not a question. It's an observation. That's the, the first part of man figure with the carry the fish. Yeah. The form of the body is exactly like the one in the Egyptian tomb. Yeah. So, uh, you know, perhaps it's all it's it's no one drew that out. They just, they are just transferred into the Egyptian <laughs> tomb. Yeah. Uh, actu yeah. Actually, yeah. actually, 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 there, there's one thing, right? The, 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 the ancient Egyptians, yeah. the ancient yeah. Egyptians yeah. did really respect the Minoans, yeah. right? They liked to adorn their palaces like the Minoans. So it was the other way around, then you got the point exactly right. 
Um, and the figure is very graceful. Uh, there's, there's nothing sexual about that image at, at all. It, 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 it's, it's really as it should be. It's away from the body and it's focusing on the fish. So you, I'm looking at that and being drawn to, directly to the fish. I'm not being drawn to the body. And I think that's an important point. But there's also an important point to the hair. I'm saying something about the hair. Alex said it's strange to the, the lower forearms were and we've got hair on the side. It's not like so exactly, exactly, it. exactly. It's the way the shoulders and the arms are. Yeah. Yeah. Because and in, it, in Egyptian Islam, you know, in yes. Egyptian religion, they had to show that. So I'm, that I'm giving myself to you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, no, no, because they, they yeah. still hold. Because you start to show the side version. Yeah. We only have one arm in the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why oh. yes. they showed the shoulders and the two arms and the two legs. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that note, on that note, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very much. Have you all enjoyed today? Thank you. Okay, I'll see those of you tomorrow, 12 o'clock at um, the, the tra train. Well, the, I won't be at the train station. I'll go directly to Lancarum. But those who are going to be at the train station, get there, and I'll see you all at the train. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all next week. The Etruscans next week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. What the what? Mag mag magnesium. I, I, I just put the dog, this is, I put, it's magnesium. Magnesium, Molly.